um, the last time I was here, which is one month and seven days today, I thought of something. Who can remember? Not Pastor Dad. <laughs> Who can remember? If you can remember, you are in for a treat. Not Pastor Dad. <laughs> Yeah. Focus on evangelism. Woo! You have been. You have, you've cheated, so you are disqualified. Come on. Woo! Can anybody remember specifics from what we shared? It's essentially, it was essentially a training program. By the way, you know, there was like a deja vu looking at that, my sister, this morning. I was like, Nima, you're right. Come on, you're right. <laughs> you know, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, yeah. Can anybody remember the specifics? Tell your story. Tell your story. Any other person remember anything? Come on, yeah. Gossip the story. story. So, on, who did you gossip to, sir? <laughs> <laughs> who did you gossip with? Did gossip to you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, want, I, I want us to look into another aspect of the same thing Amen. today. Amen. You, you see, evangelism is so important that we cannot. Um, we can we can do so many things as a church, but once we once we we begin to lack in the place of evangelism, we will be sure to die. Do you want the church to die? No. We must bring in fresh life into the kingdom. And I tried to share with us last week, I mean last month now, one month, seven days, the fact that we live in a world that needs Jesus. I will not go all over it. Darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness covers the people. We live in a nation whose destiny is tied to the gospel. You see, what we are talking about here is about your children and my children. You see, we, we have been blessed and privileged. The question is, what are we going to give to our children? What are we going to hand to our children? I want you to think about this. The national destiny of our nation is tied to read. And if we do not evangelize, this nation will become like Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be forsaken. Your own personal destiny, I said, is tied to it. So because on that day, the Bible says in heaven there will be a lot of weeping. Why would people be weeping in heaven? You see, because they will see what they should have done that they did not do, and there is no way to correct it. Let me say to Ross, there is a hell that people will go to. Does that make you, even mentioning that word, right, right. cost my own body to creep. Mm -hmm. You know, it made me shake. Ah, if I can just save someone, from experiencing that eternal damnation. Think about it, eternal. You're not talking about 70 years, 80 years, a possibility of parole. Mm. There's no reprieve. You can't get out. And the answer is in my arm and your arm. For the Lord who owns heaven, and made hell said to you and myself, 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That's the only solution. Somebody preached to you. That's why you're here. Look, I want to challenge you and, and I'm challenging myself. Do not let us become cultural Christians. Amen. Amen. Cultural Christians are Christians who come to church because, well, that's what my mother did. That's what my father did. That's what my grandma You know, when I was in year one in University of Nigeria. I made up my mind I wasn't going to do what my mother did. I wasn't going to do what my father did. Actually, I want to go and investigate what my great grandfather did. See, I am a prince from a long line of kings. I can recant my lineage for over a thousand years. Why should I give that up? To give it up, I want to have a basis, a reason. So I said, I will not just go to church because people said, let's go to church. And I'm challenging you. Don't just come to church because somebody says, come to church. Come to church because you come to a firm conclusion that there is no other way. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. So I went to one day at Bimbola, the Abushe of Yoruba land. And I said my grandfather was, my great grandfather was an Ifa priest. I know nothing about Ifa. Teach me. And he began to teach me. And as he taught me, Ifa, I met Jesus and him. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Because if I say a sacrifice here, a sacrifice there, that's how the votive is saved. When we go to that place, hey, so there is no end to this thing. It is just one a roller coaster of a continuous sacrifice. Ah. Okay, let's look at this thing again. So every day before you go out, you have to wash your hair. Ah. This every day wash head business. <laughs> you have to sacrifice. You have to do this. You have... And I remembered that the scripture says. There is one sacrifice on, offered once and for all. Amen. One sacrifice. Come on, amen. <laughs> Let me go back to where I'm coming from. Amen. One sacrifice sufficient. So I am not a pastor because my I have told you stories about my mother. But I'm not a pastor just because my mother says, I want you to be one. I'm a pastor because as a young man I said I want to know whether it is right to follow Jesus or not. Have you said that to yourself? Or are you just following the crowd? This faith it is I am going not we are going. It is only after I have said, I am going, that you can say, we are Whoa. going. On, there has to be a personal knowledge, right, right. a personal faith, amen. a personal commitment. Yes, Abraham was a person that was caught and made a personal what? Commitment. commitment. Have you made a personal commitment? And if you have made a personal commitment like I made, I, I, I made many times over, and I renewed that day in Chapel of Resurrection, University of Ibadan. How are you committing to see that other people 
are delivered from a certain destruction a certain destruction that will definitely visit them if they do not give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ this is a matter of life and death people this is not a joke it's a serious business you know it, it, it's it's about it's about eternity so please please tell somebody about Jesus please please don't take it lightly. find somebody to say Jesus does save we live in a nation where we have uh, 300 million souls and 200 out of that 300 million have no connection with Jesus. We live in its third largest mission field in the globe. But because, you know, it is America, we don't feel it. We are like the frog that is put inside water and the temperature is gradually increasing. We don't feel it. I want you to feel it. You know, I spoke a lot of a passion that day. There's an urgency in the heart of God. People of God, I beseech you by the mercies of Christ. There's somebody who needs to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ from you. Amen. There's a co-worker whose life can be transformed because you took the time and you chose to be bold and you said, do you know there is a way? <clears throat> and he said, I don't know. Let, let's go into the notes. Please remind me before we close. There's something that is very important that I would like to share with you. Well, let's start with this evangelism thing. Now, my friend who is in church, can you go to slide number, I believe, uh, 30? We dealt with pre-evangelism. We started on evangelism proper. We looked at Eugelizo, which is, uh, can I tell you the good news of what God has done for me? And I want you to go to that place where I put a slide that says, what do I say? See, because that's a big problem for most of us. I don't know what to say. What? Go on, go on. <laughs> The second part of what do I say? That you see pictures. Yeah. It's the dilemma of the evangelist. It's the dilemma of the evangelist. Think about this. Go to the next slide. You know, but don't let that phase you. Don't let that, you know, if you go to that first slide, I knowingly put that there because, no, not this one. Go, go. I knowingly put that there. Because, you know, you, when you decide you're going to do evangelism, you're going to be a little scared sometimes. You're going to meet some people that are going to be like beer. <laughs> you're going to meet some that are going to be like the honeybee. They are ready to sting you. And so on and so forth. I put all those interesting... Um, a personality, you're going to meet some backing dogs. What do you mean? Descarte say he does not understand Descarte, but he had someone say that Descarte said, You know, when you now put him through what Descarte really said, he becomes confused. But it's the backing dog phenomenon that some of them you can't catch them. They are so nice and so fine. They are like the robin. They are flitting around. If, if they put their leg here before you can hold it, they have gone to the next. You, I want to encourage you. Don't be discouraged. Talk to your neighbor and say, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. All of them are waiting to hear the good news Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, can you go to the next slide, friend? You know. It's the same in the scriptures. You know, you know, you have 
But King Solomon, he said, look, I don't know what to say. Jeremiah, I don't know what to say. And, uh, and uh, even the prophets, even the apostles, Jesus said to the apostles, don't think about what you are going to say. Why do you think he, says, he said that? Because they were already thinking in their head, what are we going to say? When you leave, what are we going to tell these people? Jeremiah said, I am a child. And God said, no, don't say I am a child. God will give you a thong that people will not be able to gain say. Come on, amen. amen. Can you say amen to me? Amen. Amen. This is so important. You know, I can tell you stories. I remembered as a teenager, I just told you the story of how as a university student, I went to look at Ifa. Now, I'm going to tell you another story because we all have stories. As a, as a teenager from three, Methodist High School in Asia, 1976, we went on evangelism and we got in, the, in my hometown, which was essentially a glorified large village at that time. <laughs> and we got to one of the houses and we met a woman that was stricken with fever and was dying right in front of us like this. And we have come to do evangelism. What do you tell that kind of family? Do you hear me? What do you say to that kind of a person? And all of a sudden, two teenagers from three boys, God said to us, at least I know God said to me, ask, can we pray for you that God can heal you? And we said to them, can we pray with you, man? God can heal you. Jesus. And the other one said, pray with her. Pray with her. It was like he has given up on her. And we prayed a simple form three prayer. And we went back home. Are you listening to me? Yes. But the next day, something stirred within us. Go back to that same house and check the woman. Mm. <laughs> when we got there, brethren, the woman had been totally healed. Totally, absolutely healed. You see, the word of salvation for that family that day was, can we pray with you? That's all. And when we prayed with them, God brought deliverance into their situation. It, we, we, it, it, it's not all the time that you say, John 36 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his own. No, no, we'll see that later. But there are certain times that it will be something else that God will make you to say. Do you understand? Yes, and I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories upon stories across more than 30 years of ministry how God takes control in the place of ministry. There was a, a day we were doing a, 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 a um, Caruso, where they invited me to a place in, in, in Kaba, another town in Nigeria, and I was to preach, and I stood on that stage, I was getting ready to go on the stage, I have already prepared my, my message, you know, those Nigerian, you know, Kusei, you know, you are charged, you have been fasting and praying, you are ready, you know, and I was going to preach on Lot, the responsibility of fathers, and you know, I was good. The person who, who translate also was ready. And you know, if I was going to say, Lord, bad father. And the person would say, Lord, Baba Buburu. Oh and Lord, evil father. And the person would say, Lord, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, God is good. He has done me well, oh my soul. 
Christ of the Lord. And God said, as I stepped on the steer to go, God said, change your message. Ah. I am ready, God. This lot will be deal with it today. <laughs> God said, you are not allowed <laughs> to speak about lots today. So, oh, oh, when God gives you a word, it is not by power or by mind. You know, he, he himself will do the work. Come on, amen. You know, God began to steer my heart. He said, speak about Lazarus. And I got on the stage and I said, some of you, your situation is Lazaritic. And people say, mm. <laughs> The harvest that day, it was so major. So many people came to Jesus. Do you know? We were standing behind the Roman Catholic. What do they call them? We are the fathers. State. And it is a Roman Catholic city. If I have gone and stayed and said, Lord, back for that, because that's how I will see it. <laughs> right behind the house. They were sitting and listening. Are you listening to me? God will give you the word Amen. for the season. Amen. This is a teaching. And I want you to hang with me. God will give you the right one. I, you, know, <laughs> you know, the next day, my host said, I want us to go and greet the father. I said, where? He said, where we, we, we use? They are the one that gave us the grant that we ah, use. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody from uh, Kogi State in Nigeria, I know that Kaba is a Roman Catholic city. I would have destroyed the ministry of that brother that night. When I got into the into their rectory or whatever they called it, and the assistant bishop was sitting down in his majestical position, he said, young man, that was a great message yesterday. Hallelujah. And because of that, my brother had favor forever in the city. You, God can give you a word. Amen. God can give you a word for your friend. God can give you a word for your neighbor, the people that surround you. I can tell you many, many more stories. You see, but I want you to understand that God will double this. Does not mean you go blank all the time. Actually, you are never supposed to go blank. Can you say amen to that? Amen. <laughs> That's the next slide, my dear friend. You are never supposed to go blank. The preparation of the heart belongs to you. The answer of the mouth belongs to who? God. So prepare, prepare, prepare. So how do we prepare? How do we prepare? What do we say? Friends, you can copy John the Baptist. Copy John the Baptist. One message, he doesn't have two messages. And that message is still effective in 2015. <laughs> One message, repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. One of the best messages anybody can preach. Why? Because it contains what the person is supposed to do where he's going and the implied impl implication of if he does not do it what is coming to him can you tell somebody about the kingdom that is at hand mm -hmm. repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand don't be afraid of asking people to repent 
And this is how you ask them. You don't ask them in an hubristic, I know more than you manner. You must never approach a John the Baptist message with a spirit of pride. Can you say with me, never, never. never. approach a John the Baptist message Baptist. with a spirit of pride. It will not work. Because you yourself, you have legs of clay. But when you approach it with a humble spirit, I said, brother, sister, God can help us together. Look at me. God is helping me. You also need to change your way. And he will help you. You know, you just said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is what? Is at hand. And his name will be glorified in all our lives. You can go forward. I'm giving you what you can do if you want to ask what you need to do. In the olden days, we used to bring notes to church. But today you can take notes on your um, on your phones. The next thing that I thought of is you can simply explain John 3, 16, 21. So you may start in John chapter 1 to create a context. Who can tell me the context of John chapter 1? Huh? <clears throat> what is the context of John chapter 1? No, I mean, um, sorry, John chapter 3 verse 1, I'm sorry. What's the context of John chapter 3 verse 1? Does anybody know? Go to your Bible, it's there. John chapter 3, verse 1. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. One of the best stories you can use to share with people, to share the gospel with people. You know, we especially live in a city of good people. How many of us know that Pujet Sand people are good people? That's what I learned living in this city. People are nice. People want to help. People want to be there for you. So when you go to them and you say you need Jesus, it's foreign. You see, because they are already trying. They're, they're doing good, right? This is a Nicodemus city. Good, good people. But there's something so when Moni and myself go to uh, do evangelism, when we were here, people would always tell us, my mama didn't bring me up that way. And that's the truth. They're in the mountains now as we're speaking. They are suffering. They are doing all kinds of things. They were not brought up that way. So why should they listen to you? Do you get the point of going, old Nicodemus? So you need to give them a context. John chapter 3 verse 1 gives you a very good context. But run quickly to John chapter 3 verses 5 to 7. My time is really running out of my time. Uh, John chapter 3 verses 5 to 7. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Maybe there are even people in this place that are not even born again themselves. And you need to ask yourself that question. And you need to help people to understand it. Tell people that they must be born again. John chapter 3 verse 14 to 21. Look at it. And very powerful. I dealt with it the last time I came. So I'm not going to read it. John chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. He says... Uh, verse 15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him again he says should not perish but have everlasting life double emphasis we, this is what we need to do 
when you find people who have personal challenges, who may be outskirts in their community, who may live on the fringe of the community, tell them the story of a woman by the well. Do, do you understand? I'm trying to get really practical now. That, that, if that is an outskirt, if, if, if you have ever met an outskirt, that's one outcast. Tell them the story of the woman by the well. You know, I mean, this lady was totally rejected by her community. But Jesus did what? Stretched out his hand to her. Can, can, do you agree with that? So tell them that story. Tell them the story of, you are lagging behind my brother, of the woman by the well. Tell them there was a woman. The essence of the story. She was not well regarded by her community. We can even say that our community was abusive emotionally towards her. One day Jesus met her. He turned her life around by loving her. End it by saying something like, Will you allow Jesus to love you today? And understand that he may say yes and he may say no. And don't let him say no discourage you. Because one day somebody is going to say yes. Oh, amen. Amen. You know. The next thing I'd like to point you to, and I'm running through this because of our time, is that you, sh you can use the eight I am statements of Jesus. You know, but when you are going to do that, you need to set the stage properly. It's, it's essentially a theological discussion. I am the bread of life. You know, I am the light of the world. I am, before Abraham was, I am. I am the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the true vine. So you can look at the situation of a person and use any of the I am statement of Jesus. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So if somebody is having a problem at the place of work, you know, they just, what do they call that yearly grading that they do for you people? Reviewed. And they just finish review. And the points were not, are not looking too good. And it seems as if he has to go and find job with. What's the name of that other organization? <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand what I'm trying to say? Eh? And it looks as if the door of this person has been blocked. What can you use? You can come to the person and say, I am, Jesus said, I am the door. Don't worry, friends. Jesus said, I am what? I am the door. And he said, what do you mean by that? Oh, that's good. That's good. Amen. You get the point of Yes, yes. You know, if somebody is having a problem with his marriage, you understand what I'm trying to say? And he is talking to you and he said, I don't know what to do with this woman. My life is a mess. Right? And he's confessing this to you. And instead of saying, ah, ah, Omar, Shiro, hmm, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Say, ah, God will help you. Why don't you turn to the good shepherd? He says, I am the good shepherd. You know, praise God. Hallelujah. Or you have a friend that a husband thinks is one Ali, and he practices on our body. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Instead of going to find people that are his size, it's when he goes, gets home that he thinks he can stand like a bee and fly like a butterfly. You know what I'm talking about. You can talk to the woman and say, ah, this Jesus will be your shepherd. You know what has happened is that the relationship has broken down and he needs a shepherd. she needs a shepherd. And on and on like that. I am the resurrection and the life. You know, um, some of you know our dear friend who is still in this city, Paul Davis. He was with me with his wife yesterday. He died. Brother Jude, is that not true? He died. 
and they called me to come and do the final rite before they take him to the monk. And something just came over me, right there in Renton Regional Hospital. Something just came over me and I, I looked at the guy who has already brought the uh, plate of death to give him the last whatever they say and then roll him up and take him. And I, I said to him, excuse me sir, are you a servant of God? And he said, oh yes, I'm a minister of the gospel. And I said to him, you know, now I am in the zone, right? <laughs> when that thing comes on you, you know. You know, it's no longer you. It's him now. It takes over. Are you listening to me? And I said, um, if you're a minister of the gospel, have you been sent to minister death or to minister life? <laughs> it was as if I struck him in the face. He stood up right. He said, I've been sent to minister life, sir. And immediately I became sir. And I said, okay, get out of here. And I said to the woman, I said, have you released your life why of your husband to death? He said, Pastor, no, sir. No, I have not released my husband to death. He was weeping. And I said, that's all I we need to hear. And I, I went in and I prayed for him. And I came back and I said to my friends, Brother Jude, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> because this woman, this man, everything has shut down inside. Nothing was working in me. The kidney shut down. The heart was being maintained by <coughs> pox. The kidney was, all, I mean, the, the intestine was already rotting. But I felt the Lord saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? He's preaching somewhere this morning. Five years ago. Five years ago. I said to Brother Jude, you're on duty. Me, you're on duty. Every day we go to the hospital. One of us go for 46 days. He was in coma. And those 46 days, every day we will go. So it's not a question of Brother Shai, you're the big man. It's a question of a people that believe that he is the resurrection Amen. and the life. Yes. We will pray for this dead man. Mm. We will pray for him. You know, when you get to the hospital and you hold his hand, my sister, can I hold your hand? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> when you hold his hand, every time, he will squeeze your spark. So he said, ah, he's alive, he's alive, let's keep praying. When he now came out of the coma, he said to us, I didn't know. I didn't know. But the resurrection and the life made him to do that. Amen. Do you, so you can use that. Can you believe God for a miracle? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories. In Dallas, in my church, the resurrection and the life visited. One of my members, a sister from Cote d'Ivoire, Siku Sela, nearly 60 years old. How many Siku Sela do you see that is nearly 60 years old? Summer last year, the blood in, his, in her body dried up. They couldn't find a vein. Everything has collapsed. This sister is still <laughs> dressing fine and going all over the last because of the resurrection and the life. Amen. Let me run. If you're going to use the I am, you must be prepared for a level of in-depth discussion. It, it cannot be hit her one thing, a level of in-depth discussion. There are other tools that you can use from the scriptures. You can use what is called the Roman road. You can go on the Roman road. And the first stop is Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And I want you to go home and read this. 
The next stop is Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 18. And each one of them lead us to the point where the uh, uh, the person you are discussing with, you know, but you need to get the person to agree to discuss with you on this. There are other polling books that you can use, and I'm willing to give you this, either electronically <coughs> or physically. And I, I have listed some of them here. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 to, to 20. Um, I, I am being very cognizant of the time now, I'm rushing. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. Ephesians 1, verse uh, 1 to 13. Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 10. Ephesians 2, verse 14 to 17. Philippians 3, verse 2 to 11. Colossians 1, 12 to 18. And 21 to 23. All of these passages are evangelistic passages. I want you to read them. And I want you to ask yourself, how can I use these in my situation, there are other tools. There is what is called the four spiritual laws, and I think I brought it up here. Let me try it. Oh no, I didn't put it there. I, I can send you a copy of it. I have it here on on my on my laptop. I can send you a copy. Four spiritual laws. What are the four spiritual laws? Let me quickly go through them. Uh, uh, the first, uh, where is it? Uh, I thought I pulled it up here. Oh my. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to to say what is not. It's not here. I apologize. Uh, the first spiritual law. Okay. The first law says. Uh, Where is it? Come on. Come on. Okay. The first law says. Um, sorry. You can go to uh, cru crusadeforchrist.org clu.org it is there it's not a secret they have used it all over the world they have used it a million plus time more than a million plus time um the uh, cruise, crusade campus crusade for christ god loves you and created you personally uh, god has a plan for your life uh, people are sinful so don't kill yourself because you think you are sinful. People are separated and the wages of sin is dead. Uh, um, and so on and so forth. You can see in that uh, book. Now, now, listen to this. Of all of this, when I was younger, it was this first spiritual law that was a big thing. Um, they also used other tools. And I can give you some if you are interested. But you know what I found is there's nothing beats a man who is genuinely interested in his neighbor. A man who is genuinely committed to seeing that his neighbor gets to know Jesus. Personally, I've never used any formula. Never. But I have followed the leading of the Spirit within my heart. And I tell you, I have seen God do wondrous things. I've seen God do wondrous things. And I'm challenging you. Can you follow the leading of the Spirit and let His name be glorified in all our lives? Can you take time, you know, somebody will say, oh, um, this was a sound like the usual brush, I know. But look, this is so important that I, I just want you to, 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 to take time to let it sink. Let it get within you. Now, I was thinking about this. There are practical ways we can go about this. You do have friends that you can invite for lunch, don't you? People that you can invite for lunch. You have people that you can invite for dinner. As simple as that. As simple as that. This brother Jude who is sitting here, who is the pillar of this church, the first week I got into this town, he somehow had from someone 
that a pastor, a new pastor, came to town. The first week, 2007 March. And he came looking for me. And the first thing he told me, he said, Pastor, I used to know Jesus, but I don't know him as I used to know him again. Can you help me? You know, it took me aback. You know, because I don't know people to be that direct. He said, I used to know Jesus when I was younger. I used to follow this Jesus. But I don't know him as I used to know him. Can you help me? And I said, we will try. That's my answer to him. I don't know where it went. Just suddenly disappeared. I said to him, I said, we will try. He's still sitting here. Come on, amen. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? When we started the discussion, we was, ah, pastor, but God said to Timothy, use a little wine for your stomach sake. Can you show me, pastor, where the Bible says no wine? Ah, say, really? The Bible did not. I know some of you are still asking that question. <laughs> the Bible did not say no wine. It said, oh, Pastor Shad, the Bible did not say no wine. Uh, that's the truth. What do you want Timothy's sickness? Okay. Because the equation must be balanced, right? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We don't want some of this sickness. We don't want some. And you know, gradually, God turned this man into a mighty man of valor. And somebody shout hallelujah for gradually. And, and you know, there's nothing that beats a person that is committed to his neighbor. I have told you stories many times in the past of a lot of my friends. Get out. Do something. Do something with your with your skill. Do something that will force people to confront the gospel. Create opportunity avenues. I'm going to be discussing certain things with the, with the pastor before I leave this time around. Create avenues for people to get to know the, the, the Lord through you. Create the avenues. Create the avenues. When we looked for a way to reach our community and we didn't understand how to do it a few years back, we started something that we called during the summer, Get Feet, Get Jesus. You know, so we would wear a t-shirt and go to the field and we would pretend to be athletes. And people would come and ask questions. And then we would tell them about Jesus. A few days ago when you were doing your Barbecue, what did you call it? Somebody called me, Pastor Shire. I I can see your people here in the in the in, on, on the field. To be honest with you, I have forgotten who he is. Mm. <laughs> but he was just talking, man. You know, I said, we are you are my party now. I have forgotten. <coughs> And so on and so forth, all over the world. Do you want God to use you and make you a means of salvation to others? Yes. You know, me as a junior sister, I was your age when I brought most of my friends to the Lord. Today, all of them are provincial pastor, zona pastor. These are these big men, preachers. But something says, preach the gospel, child. When I come out, my friends, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. What do you do with your own friends? You talk about, ah, see your car, shaman, ah. What's the name of the, the star? Talk about Jesus. Find a way to turn see your to a sea Jesus. Take somebody to go and watch Sea so that you can find an opportunity to find 
to help him see who? Jesus. Take him to go and see the mariners so that you can have that two hours where he is captured. He is your captive audience. And you will have a way to be able to tell him about Jesus. Will you do that for me? Who will find a friend and say, I'm taking you to lunch or dinner so that you can discuss the gospel? Is there anybody like that who is willing to try? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is it no takers? That's so you are not going <laughs> So, <laughs> Dick in faith, you will find somebody, any other person, any other. I feel like I have failed. Because I'm testing me now. Nobody can think of a friend that he will take. No other person. Is there more, one more person or two more people? Huh? I ask because I've already paid for the dinner. I've already paid for the dinner. <laughs> Let's preach the gospel. Let's preach the gospel. I want to end today's message. I know our time is up. By coming us back to the mysterious power of the gospel that we represent. And you, I want you to know that you are coming in Jesus who is the same yesterday, today. This last week, all of the week, from Monday, I was among a group of people, intercessors from all over the world. And, and they were praying throughout the week. Can you imagine people praying 10 hours a day and they are not tired? And they are praying continuously 10 hours a day every day. No God has them. Do you believe God to help you in the things of the Spirit? That's, that's how I like to close today. You see, I was so jealous for what I saw there. I was so jealous I want to see you not be a cultural Christian, but to be somebody who is in touch with heaven. To be somebody who lifts up his eyes onto the hill, somebody who sees the invisible. Do you know you can see the invisible? Do you know you can see the invisible? I want to encourage you, people of God. You know, as a younger man, I was flying between Singapore and I think and, and the US, Singapore and Chicago. And I slept. And all of a sudden, I found myself experiencing virtually the same thing as that Apostle Paul said in the experience. Whether in the body or in the spirit, I don't know. I just find myself in a place where you begin to hear words that are not legal to say carelessly. God can take you to heaven. Are you listening to me? God can take you to heaven. You know, this week on Thursday, we were worshipping, 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 and all through the worship, all I could do was just weep. Tears were just cascading down my face as if I couldn't fully understand it. 
I just wept and 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 wept again. And as his tears clear, and my heart came to rest. Christianity, we can't go beyond it. And, you know, and it was like layers upon layers upon layers. And I'm not going to detail because I know what time is on. And I saw. Do you know? Person who was going to speak came and began to speak. The person started where my vision stopped. And went back over everything I said I saw without my uttering a word to her. God can use you. I don't want you to be involved in lifeless Christianity. I want to challenge you. There's power mighty in the blood of Jesus. A few months ago, I went through terrible storms at work. I mean, the level of storm. You know what I mean? People are threatening to sue me in the church. Can you imagine? See, how, what does what is a pastor selling that you are seeing him? People are threatening massive lawsuits against us. But you know, we were not shaken. Press them, but not for sale. You know why we are not shaken? Because nearly a month before that situation began. We just entered my office and I sat down and my wife went out and she came back and when she came back you could see almost like she was stunned and I, it was like what's going on here you know she says shut up it was like I saw a huge lion standing behind your seat. I saw a huge lion. God knew the battles were coming. So it's his word to give us so no shaking <coughs> say to your neighbor no shaking no there are powers in the spiritual that you can use that's how I would like to end today there are graces from heaven that can flow through you peace don't be offended with me. I beseech you in the name of Jehovah. Father Lord, I just want to pray with your precious people. Trust. 
tried to say heavenly language in my heart. I have not had it to your world. I have not subtracted from it. All that we may know you, all that we may see, Glorious King who is worshipped by thousands upon thousands of angels. The opener of the eye, the strengthener of the heart. Ah, God was not failed. God who still draws miracles. What a mighty one. Beautiful for situation. Joy of the world. I worship you. said that we may follow true to know you. Help us to do the little things that you desire we do. That you may do the great thing that you alone can cause to come to pass. Is anyone in this place who desires your help? By the function of your spirit that you are placed upon my life. Pray that the miraculous will happen. Amen. And that your help will be granted. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God bless you.